let's do some examples graphing hyperbolas and um, also finding you know the ordered pairs that represent the vertices the center and the foci okay so let's start with an easy case and let's do x squared over 4 minus y squared over 9 is equal to 1 and I go well, graph this give me this information give me that information you know blah 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 from this equation so <clears throat> you look at this and you go well it's subtraction so it's a hyperbola and not an ellipse. If it were addition, it would be an ellipse because obviously it would look very similar initially. So this is like hyperbola. So that's my first step, right? Is it a hyperbola? Is it an ellipse? Is it a circle? What is it? Um, second step, I want to identify the transverse axis. Is it vertical? Is it horizontal? You know, is it opening up and down or is it opening left and right? Now my transverse axis, this is transverse. The x squared leads, the x stuff leads, so therefore the transverse axis is horizontal. A squared <clears throat> is always the first denominator, always for hyperbolas. B squared is the second, so A is equal to 2, B is equal to 3. Again, A does not have to be bigger than B for hyperbola. It does for an ellipse. <clears throat> Um, and let's find the center, and I'm doing this nice easy case, right? Nothing is being added, subtracted to x or y, so the center's at the origin. <clears throat> now, um, I'm going to ask for the equation of the asymptotes, but I'll do that after I graph it so you can see. Um, and then we'll find the vertices, and we'll find each of the focus, or the foci for plural. So I'm going to start my graph, actually. Okay, and each one of these ticks represents one unit. <clears throat> and um, let's start with, okay, let's start with the center. The center is at the origin, so this is my center. And I'm going to, you know, let's call it C. Let me graph it, graph it in yellow. Just to be different. So here's my C. Now, to get to a vertex, the distance from the center to a vertex is A. So A is 2. Now, the transverse axis is horizontal. A is 2. The transverse axis is horizontal. So I'm going to go to the right 2 and to the left 2 to get my vertices. So they're, you know, x-intercepts in this case only because of the situation. So my vertices, plus or minus 2, 0. Okay? I have those. Now... Let's finish the graph. B is equal to 3. Again, B is not part of the graph, but B is going to help me determine that box that will help determine my asymptotes, that will help determine how wide my hyperbola opens up. So from here, up and down, 1, 2, 3, B units, right, to get this box. Again, this box is not part of my graph, but this box is useful when I graph a hyperbola because I'm going to go now and do my asymptotes that go through the center and through the corners of that box. And my uh, vertices are here and here, right? I know that because the transverse axis is horizontal, it's going to open left and right. So now I can determine how wide to open up these curves for my hyperbola because they approach the asymptotes, but they do not actually go on to so this is, you know, the yellow graph is the graph of my hyperbola that has this particular equation. I'm not done, though. I want a little more information. I want the equation of the asymptotes, and I know that it's y equal to k, which is 0. I'll show that. Plus or minus something, x minus 0, h. So is it b over a or a over b here? Well, to get this line, I'm going to go from the center. I'm going up b and over a up B and over A. So the equation of the asymptote is B over A. So in this case, Y is equal to, when I simplify, 3 halves X. This is the equation, or plus or minus, I should say, because one asymptote has got a positive um, slope and the other one has a negative slope. So these are the equations of the two asymptotes here. Now, I'm not done because, I'm, you know, you could be asked for foci uh, or the ordered pair for each focus. And there's a relationship between a, b, and c. a squared plus b squared is c squared. So a squared is 4 plus b squared 9 is c squared. So c squared is 13. So c is equal to the square root of 13 plus or minus square root of 13. 
Now let me put that on my graph. I'll put it in red. Now the square root of 13 is um, between 3 and 4, so it's a little bigger than 3. Um, uh, yeah, a little bigger than 3, maybe closer to 4. Um, I'm roughly sketching anyway. And the foci exist on the um, transverse axis within these parabolas, within these you know, curves that represent my hyperbola. So I'm counting square root of 13 units, which is a little more than 3, or in between 3 and 4, to the right and to the left. 1, 2, 3-ish, approximately here, is one focus. 1, 2, 3, approximately here, is another focus. And I'm going to the right and to the left of the center. So I'm changing the x-coordinate of the center. So my focus, my foci, have the ordered pairs plus or minus the square root of 13, because I'm going to the right and to the left from the center, square root of 13 units, comma, 0. So you could be asked for any part of this information regarding your um, hyperbola, and this is just simply the graph of it. If I want to, I can erase the green, because the graph is really just the yellow, but I'm leaving it there so you guys can see that. So this is how I graph a hyperbola with the center at 0.